Rochelle, good to see you. I love seeing you. <laughs> so I, I set you up because I think of you as skincare, beauty, understanding age, and having some answers for all of us. Oh, and entrepreneurship on top of everything. So I hope that's not too much pressure. No, no, not at all. All right. Well, um, so let's jump in there and talk about it. People uh, got a little brief uh, taste of your background if they don't know you. You've run June Jacobs for a long time, and now you have your own company as well. Well, it's part of the same family. So okay. it's called Naturally Serious Skin and with my co-founder, Sarah McNamara. And our really our mission was to kind of bring clean beauty to a new level. And it started with June Jacobs, but we wanted something more approachable, um, a much tighter selection and really for people entering into the skincare market for the first time, because it's so overwhelming, as mm -hmm. we all know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was kind of the initial goal behind there and taking all the guesswork out of the questions that everyone has and just doing all the homework for everybody. And you and I have talked a lot about um, clean skincare and clean beauty in general. What, how do you define clean beauty? Well, for us, it's really what we call no bad ingredients, and that's an acronym for banned, ambiguous, or debatable. So what we did was we started with this cluster of what we knew we didn't want in the products, which to us was as important, if not more important than what we put into the products. So we wanted to be able to create that Lux amazing product that I love and that is you know i've been using forever and ever and really just make it as clean as humanly possible so we started off with this you know pretty significant list and we're continuously adding to it but we've it's it's amazing how many brands that are out there consider themselves clean that really aren't clean so we want to take it to a new level anything that anyone's talking about and then some on every level so we have our patented blend of six antioxidants in every single product which is red white and green tea goji berry pomegranate and grapeseed extract and for us it's like an anti-pollution um, barrier because you know it's interesting I used to say it's like a suit of armor so the second you put it on and you open your front door to start your day you you know you're you were able to deal with it all. And through COVID, I realized you need to put your suit of armor on inside too, between the heat and the air, everything inside the cooking, the oils, everything going on inside your home is equally as important. So for me, that is the most important thing I do every morning after I drink my cup of coffee is making sure I'm protected from the environment. I, I completely agree with you. And I, I feel like it's, uh, I didn't used to miss it. If I if I skip something when I was younger, it didn't matter to me. I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I got. I think I have something on. But now, as I've gotten older, I just realize how important it is, and I actually feel different when I walk outside if I don't have that kind of barrier between the world and myself. You know, Tamsin, we talk about this all the time because you don't love makeup, but you have no choice but to wear makeup. And I just don't wear makeup except for eyeliner. It's sort of my thing mm -hmm. that like it's just. For, so for me, having glowing skin is sometimes too glowing, um, but it's really, it's really important to me because that's where I get my confidence from is when I feel like I feel protected from kind of the world. But I also feel like I, I know that I'm portraying out there what I feel inside, which is like that glow that I want to kind of everyone to feel also. Yep. Well, you're right, though. And, you know, I have to be honest with you, you. You We've talked about this. I don't wear makeup if I'm not on television, if I'm not in front of a camera like this, I don't wear makeup. I want my face clean and I want to feel, I don't know, it just feels less sweaty and less, you know, and quite frankly, as I've gotten older, I feel like I look older with more makeup on. So I've really scaled back on what I put on, even if it's for on air. And um, so I like the natural look. I really do like it. And I've grown to appreciate it in myself. Some days not always appreciating, but I appreciate it in myself for the most part. Right. You just said something, though. We just have to talk about it for a second, because I thought it was just me, where you said you think you look older with makeup 100%. on. So my kids say, like, when I get my makeup done whenever I have to go somewhere important or do something. So I went on QVC for the first time um, on air for um, Beauty with Benefits and Cancer for Careers. And I was literally, and I know you and Laura are close yeah. also, but Laura Geller did my wedding makeup, and I've known her since 1997. Yeah. So she is the QVC guru. So I was literally FaceTiming with her and she was like, she had tears in her eyes because I was such a disaster. But you know, when you look that my kids say I look like a clown. It's just, you can see so much more. I feel like when you're not, you know, when you have that makeup on everything shows, right, right. you can get away with a lot more when you're clean 
without that. Now I love eye makeup, but it's the other stuff that really but, freaks but that's me out. What, but that is what Laura's a key is, is that she feels like as long as your eyes are done, that really, it really helps and it really pops you. But she's she right. She is right about that. And, and, <laughs> and she, she does, well, she does such an incredible job anyway uh, with makeup, but she's right about that, about um, doing your eyes and doing parts of your face in a different way as you get older. Because I think there is something to that when I was, I don't know. Look, we, we actually did make up when we were young to look older. Right. And then as I've gotten older, I've scaled it back in certain areas, not in all areas. Like I still contour my face. Cause I'm like, Oh, there's no more cheek. That doesn't look so good. Yeah. So I've done some different things, but when I was young, I wore big, bright lipstick and eyes really done up. And now I've learned how to just, you know, highlight different areas. So it doesn't feel like I'm just caking on a bunch of stuff for no reason at all. Right. But you, you, no, but just that cakey feeling. That. This area right here is the area that the age yeah. shows with makeup on. Yeah, for well, me. I think for everybody, right? If if it's not done, if you don't have Laura Geller with you doing it, you don't do it right. <laughs> I totally agree with that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love her. Well, she taught me about neck fans, so that's the only thing. I saw all of that. I was laughing. You have to like kind of know Laura really to truly appreciate it. But she kills me she with that. Is. I love it. I love it too. I love it too. It's made all the difference in the world. All right. So I want to, yeah, she's very, she makes you want to do whatever she says. Like, I'm like, whatever you're doing, I'll, I'll have that. Please, you just, just do it. Tell me what to do. Um, let's talk about business and entrepreneurship because I think that's important too. You know, you were running already a super successful line and then you started another one. Uh, what were the challenges to that? And I know you were already in that field, but that, I don't think that negates challenges at all. No. <laughs> um, I think product development is really is in, in natural products and clean products has always been a challenge. But June Jacobs is a natural line. So I had a lot of that experience. Um, we have incredible chemists that help put together all of the trauma that comes with creating these products. Because if you don't do it right, they break down. And the idea is really to make sure that you have the right componentry. I mean, everything is a challenge along the way. Now, making sure you can get the right componentry for our, in our case, it has to be in the United States. We don't want to import um, anything from outside of the US. We want to try to keep everything as domestic as possible. And every step of the way, you run into an issue. And it's, it's unbelievable, but I think the saving grace, and at this point, um, I've been working with my mother since 1999. So I've been in the beauty industry officially for you know, 22, 21 years. And I, I love every aspect of it, but it's really, it's, it's unbelievable without a team behind you who really agree with you and stand by everything you're saying it's really hard to move forward. So when you have naysayers or negative energy around you, it makes every single thing you do more challenging. So we really, really have an amazing team. And I think that's what saved me, especially through COVID, because we launched the line, you know, right a year before COVID. So it was supposed to be a digital first line. So we got really yeah. lucky with that in the sense that, you know, we were, that was what our goal was, but it's, Without, like Sarah and I have just the people surrounding us really help us to get where we want to go. And I was just thinking back to my corporate days in corporate America and everyone is so scared in corporate America, I feel like, because if they make a mistake, they're going to get fired. No one wants to take risks. No one wants to get out of their comfort zone because it's really easy to keep your salary, do what you're supposed to do and technically succeed. But I feel like if you don't take those really big risks and you don't do things a little differently than other people have done them before, you're not actually elevating. You're just doing things the way they've been done. And I always say, where would we be technologically speaking if we just said, oh, that's the way it's always been. So you've got to really push people to um, feel comfortable enough to go out of their comfort zone and help you take those risks. You know, I was trying to figure out, uh, I'm always like trying to think about different names and titles and words that, you know, make sense for everything. Right. And I kept, 
uh, I was working on a book and I kept running up against this phrase, like being fearless. So I don't know that there's such a thing as being fearless. I think there's a thing as being bold, right? So we're all a little afraid. Like there's, there's always something to be fearful of, but um, I think being bold is what you're talking about doing, which you can't always do in corporate America. If you're too bold in corporate America, you're You're out of there. Yeah, you're out of there. Like it's not going to work. So where did you kind of unlock your bold and say, this is what I'm doing, leaving corporate America, going into to a space that is an entrepreneur. I mean, your, your mother is an entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur. I mean, that's, that's in your family. Right. I think, you know, it's funny because on the fearless thing, it goes beyond just the workforce or the bold thing. And I think it's a, not being afraid of failure is what allows you to mm-hmm. quote, be fearless and you can still be bold. But in my case, I'm going to talk about like, I, I've always wanted to do risky, crazy things, not like right. an extreme crazy, but for me, crazy. And um, I was in Kitzbühel in, which I'm pronouncing wrong, in oh, Austria. No. And uh, you, right, you could jump off a 10,000 foot mountain with a backpack and a guy attached to you and you could sail for 25 minutes right. over the mountain. And it was a foggy day. You could barely see what was going on. And no one was lying. I, I was the first one on the gondola because I thought there was going to be a thousand people behind me because we weren't sure if we could go down. I was the first one online with a complete stranger behind me. Turns out he was in the Israeli military and was incredibly <laughs> gifted. Thank God. But, you know, I was the first one down that. And I look at that video of me jumping off that mountain, running full speed. And I feel like that's kind of how I live my life in a way. I just take risks and I know everything's going to work out somehow. And when it doesn't, you figure out a way around it and you learn from those mistakes. And that's what I've done in every step of my life, personally, professionally. And, and how did you find that? How did you of. find that place in you? Did you just, did it, were you born with that? Did you learn along the way that it didn't work out and you found the workaround and it finally worked out? I think watching my mother, my mother's like not someone who's going to say this to you, but she's going to show it to you. So I think just watching my mother, never taking no for an answer and just pushing, 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 pushing in whatever it is that she did, did, does and did. I took it to a different way that worked kind of for more of my personality. I mean, my mother's not going to jump off a mountain, right? Um, <laughs> she's just not. Well, maybe in a business sense did. I mean, she started that business at a time when, you know, I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of challenges that you and I don't face oh, yeah. as women in this generation. Right. No, for sure. For sure. But just, I what was going to say was exactly that she does it in her way. And I, and I know I've watched her fail over the years and she comes back stronger and better than the last time over and over and over again and reinventing and reinventing. And I, I just saw her doing that for my, my whole adult life or my whole life, mm-hmm. not even just adult since I was a child. And it's just, you know, push yourself to things that, you know, even if you think you can't do it, but now I think I can do almost anything because she's taught me through what she does that you can do almost anything. I just love it. I fell in love with the two of you. I don't even know how many years ago. I was 10 years ago. I just got the Facebook alert. Wow. I just, I just thought it was so, you were both so great. Like her energy is contagious. And then I met you and I was like, they are just awesome. And we've stayed in touch and made over the years and and sometimes years have gone by and um, you can pick back up. And I think that that's also something important. I think it's important to know there are women out there that uh, are like-minded and you can pick up the phone after I don't know how many years and say, Hey, can you help me? But it's like, we two seconds later. I mean, you text me, I text back in two seconds and we're on the phone five minutes Mm -hmm. later. Like Get it's it just one of those things where we know we're aligned with our thought process. Yep. We know we, you know, for both of us, we've talked about this, you know, privately, but we both want to do better in every way we can, mm-hmm. whether it's for the environment, whether it's for our friends and family, making sure they're better, getting the best health care yeah. they can get and doing whatever we can to be better humans. And it's sometimes, and I, you know, I was just, I just did an article the other day. I was like, What's one of the things about me that I think is so important is that those small acts of kindness. So I, I smile and I, you know, you can change someone's whole day. You have no idea what they're thinking. I could cry sometimes because they'll tell you something like, thank you so much for saying hi. Like it's such a big deal to a lot of people. And it's just those small acts of kindness that make me feel better every night. I think that those make me feel better than maybe my smile to just somebody else. And you don't even realize it just for doing, doing good. And look, that's what we're here for at the end of the day, right? Like we're not taking anything with us. We're not, you know, we're all, we're all the same at the end of the day when you, when you break it all down. So, um, well, and you know, just Tamsin, just for a quick second, you're, 
probably the most humble person I am friends with in the sense that what, you know, you inspire people every night on television, you inspire people through social media, you are, no, no, you just take a minute. Cause I feel like you, you're, you're, you really do. And you're so real. And do you remember when you came to my office, you brought your cousin with you. We had such, that was like 10 years ago, right? That was, I actually think I have it on my Instagram. It was one of my first posts ever. Um, it's just, you're such an easy person to love and be inspired by. And I, I think women who watch you or how, whatever age they are, just, you know, 20 to, to our age, you know, just must get inspired every night. And so I thank you for that. 